A couple of videos ago, I had a look at Virtual Mim. I quite enjoyed it. It's going to be a bit of a steep learning curve to get that all figured out, especially with the, the error that was coming up. Didn't seem related to what was set. But I thought my original point was to actually install Webmin and have a look at that. We'll do that in this video. Okay, so I've got a completely fresh install of FreeBSD like I did in the, the virtual min one and I'm going to install Webmin so that we can have a look at it. All I have installed so far is Pico Alpine, Duaz and Sudo. I probably won't use them, not in this video anyway, but they're there if I need to. So let's jump in and let's get Webmin installed. So package, install, Webmin. Let it do its thing, fetching, extracting, installing, job done. Now I'm also going to install those other modules that it's suggesting there. And there we go, it's going to pull in a few extra dependencies as it says. Also, before I go ahead and do that, I want to just grab this. We'll need this in a minute because that's what we'll need to do. Let it do its thing. There we go. Right, so we just need to enable Webmin. So Webmin enable equals yes. Just bung that in there. And as the package message mentioned, we need to run this script. So let's do that. And this is just going to go through a few bits. So config file directory. Yep. Log file directory. Path to Perl. Web server port. We'll stick to the default. We'll go with root and we'll put in the password. We'll use SSL. It's always good practice if you can. And that should be that done. So let's start it and see what happens. There you go. It's started. Excellent. So we shouldn't need this console again. The whole point of using Webmim is so that you don't need the console. Personally, it's not the way I like to operate, but sometimes there is good reason for having it. Can't think of any off the top of my head, but there are reasons. So let's come out of there and let's open up a browser. I think it's 11. Yes, it is. Now this message comes up because it's a self-signed certificate and you can change that. You can change it to one from Let's Encrypt or anywhere else. I'm not going to go through that in this video. It is fairly easy. So let's continue. Here we go. Let's log in as root. There's no point clicking on remember me because it won't. Never blimmin does. Yeah, see, if you look at the certificate details, blah, 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 blah. Self-signed. And there we go. We're installed. Now you get a few stats. And it's also telling me that version is uh, out of date by quite a long way by the looks of it. So before I do anything, I'm just going to check to see if that is the case, because I'm pretty sure that the packages I was using is actually from quarterly, not latest. So I'm going to check that. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Let's change that to latest. OK, let's change that to latest. Package, upgrade. Uh, interestingly, no update to Webbin. There we go. Good. I'm going to do it on here. I'm going to click on the upgrade. There is a slight issue with this in that if FreeBSD's packages update to a version less than that, when I do a package upgrade, it's going to go to a, a an older version. But that's fine for now. I want to get on the latest. Okay, here we go. I am on the latest version. Good stuff. That's what we want. Groovy. Yeah, see? It has actually got four cores, but they're Pentium cores. Rubbish. Right, so here is the configuration for Webmin. <coughs> and there is a lot here. You can restrict access, and you can change the user... You can change the user interface theme, anything like that, add modules. Now that's very handy, and we will look at some third-party modules for this in a little while. So we have got what starts up and what shuts down which is really good to look at. Very good stuff. Okay, that's quite interesting. Hmm. Uh, start the software, watchdog daemon. No, I don't need any of that. 
the sim mail no so it's good that it's got this now these are all the scripts that are located in etc and we'll just log in and have a look at those so they are etc rc.d and you will see scripts and they will all relate to what's in here plus what's in user local etc rc.d i believe if there's one here that says webmin yep exactly what is in both there you go so we'll leave that for now we don't need to change anything in here can change passwords from for any user on the system that's always helpful because there's bound to be somebody that forgets their password and you can change that from here your file systems and we go z root interesting ah because they're not editable so it hides the non-editable file systems and they're all your data sets quotas if you want to put that in file system backup yeah ldap it's not installed don't get me started on ldap <laughs> okay mimes and all your running processes now this is quite useful as well because sometimes there are processes that you just can't kill so if i was to kill that one now it would log me out and don't want to do that you can set up cron tabs here the schedule commands cron tabs package updates now there shouldn't be any because we just updated them I've never actually used this. I wonder if this works. Interesting. Oh, really? Oh, this is ones that are installed, I guess. It looks about right. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Still calls it package ng. Man pages. Shut up, watch. System logs. I find this quite useful now and then. I don't want to log in. Now, you can just check on it by... Let's have a look. What's the... There we go. So you can view it. Nothing in the log, of course. It's not running mail services. That might be a good one. Yeah, there we go. Messages, nothing in there. Security, that'd be a good one to have a look at. Nothing in it. Probably not much in there. There we go. So you can check out the logs. Users and groups, you can add users, which is always helpful. Services that are running, so SSH server, send mail shouldn't be running bugger off don't use that and access to email no such directory if you run mail services you'll have email some extra tools here command shell so you can run a command custom commands file manager now this is ah oh, stop this bin this is quite helpful you can actually edit these files Not going to. I don't want to mess anything out. Although this is just a copyright notice. But you can upload stuff. You can edit these. Can be quite helpful. HTTP tunneling. Perl modules that are installed. I would stay away from this. Because you can get into a situation where you've got modules from the package the system. And stuff from on here. That can be a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Web directories protected. Now, as far as I'm aware, this runs on Apache, and we're not, yeah, and we don't use Apache, or I don't. System and server statistics. None of these things are installed, but that can be quite helpful. It gives you access to a terminal if you really need it. There you go, that's quite helpful. Upload and download files. Networking. Now, you will notice that there's no PF firewall on here. Yeah, and that is mainly because that's a Linux thing, IP filter. Unless you're using IP filter, and we are not, I tend to use PF. Your interfaces, network services. So network services are, where is this from? Binet-D, I think. Yeah, there it is. NFS mounts, if you've set up an NFS server, or you've got access to NFS mounts. TCP wrappers positions on local disk same sort of thing as the other one there we go but this is old style positions we don't really use that these days on freebsd any printers system time clustering if you use that i don't generally and unused modules now these are all the modules that are in the basic install of webmin and currently none of this is installed so you could install apache bind so look it just to, to prove my point, let's install bind. So package, install, bind. 
So that's now set up, right? That's now installed, sorry. There we go. Just by installing it, all the options now appear. Again, if I was to do the same for Dovecot, It's always an example, isn't it? I don't know why. There we go. So if I put if I put that in there, there we go. So you see my point. Once it's installed, you've got access. You may have to change a few settings, paths and stuff to get it to the right place. But that's what will be the case. So package one last time. Install. Oh, um, my SQL. What is the latest of my SQL server? Let's have a look. 84. 84? Okay. 84 server. My SQL 84 client. Yeah, why does it always default to that? It's never that. Again, run that in there. It's not running. <laughs> but if it was, it would list the databases. So you see my point, network services, yeah, yeah, yeah. X on it, D, PHP, we're not running, Postfix, we're not running. So yeah, quick and easy overview of what Webmin can do for you, plus lots of other stuff. Oh, that's better. Right, oh, I didn't know it had a dark mode. That's good. Right, so let's go to uh, Webmin configuration, Webmin modules. There we go. So this is the list of, of Webmin modules from Webmin themselves. Now, there are two ways of doing this. We can grab the link and get it from there. There we go. That's installed it. That's how quick it is. So that should be in servers. Yeah. It's not running. <laughs> uh, it's missing some Perl modules, but that's easy enough to do. We can install that. So let's do that, actually, just to show you. All right. Uh, FreeBSD ports. Um, yeah, so we can go, we'll get both of those. Package, install, and that one. Install those. There we go. <laughs> nice and simple. Now we can edit, create virtual hosts, edit existing ones, but there aren't any loads of things that you can install spam assassin there we go loads of them irc whoa what was that what is cloudmin interesting i did not know they did that oh uh, okay that's quite impressive that they've done that as well that's pretty cool anyway that's not what we're here for i'm not actually here for any of that <laughs> yeah i know it's not started that's why now the other thing that I wanted to check was because there are some database servers that are based on MySQL, but are not MySQL. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. MariaDB. This is basically MySQL. So it removes MySQL. It should not be how I start it. See, I've never used it, and I don't know why I never moved over like most people did. I think it's because I've just got so much running in my SQL. Let's start it and see what happens. Anyway, I'm getting away from my point. We can come out of that. So, it gives you nice graphs. Disk I.O., processes, memory, CPU, and network. That's quite nice. Drop me drink. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I like to run services myself and issue commands, but there are certain circumstances where this can be quite useful if you lock yourself out of SSH for some reason you're setting up your firewall and you, you've made a mistake this can be very helpful because you can you can stop your firewall log in check your rules start it all up again yeah let me know drop a comment down below if uh, if you use webmin i know a couple of you do drop a comment like share subscribe 
really want to push on now and make quite a load of videos and and let's see if we can get over that 10,000 line that'd be quite cool never thought i'd get there anyway i'll see you in the next video take care